Hello and welcome to Sports Fan Entertainment. 32 teams, 32 days, and today we are talking about the Oakland Raiders, the team that gave John Gruden 10 years, $100 million to come in and rectify the disastrous 2017 campaign that they endured as they finished 6 and 10 after being 12 and 4 the year prior and having legitimate Super Bowl aspirations. We're going to discuss the Raiders today, give you their strengths, their weaknesses, discuss some statistical projections that I have. I'll give you some bold predictions as well, and we'll finish this video with my official win loss prediction for the Oakland Raiders. Let's start with their strengths, let's start with their wide receivers. I like their wide receivers from wide receiver one to wide receiver six. Let's start with wide receiver one, Omari Cooper. And yes, he had a disappointing 2017 campaign, but he bulked up. He's 6'1", 225 pounds. He's lean. He's mean. He's bigger than ever, and he's going to show up this season to me. You're already hearing John Gruden talk about how good Omari Cooper has been thus far into training camp. We're still early, but I like to hear those reports. And we already know the potential that Omari Cooper has. It's just, can he put it all together? And he was very young when he was drafted. He's still maturing. He's only 23 or 24 right now. He's still ascending into his prime. Give him some time. I think this will be a great year for his development. And I think two, three years on the road, he will be that absolute beast that we know he can be. Moving on from him, we have Martavis Bryant, who the Oakland Raiders picked up from the Pittsburgh Steelers. This guy has some troubles with the Steelers, but whenever he was on the field, you can see how dangerous he could be. This is a legitimate number two weapon in the NFL. And combining his talent with the talents of Derek Carr is a very good combination to me. How about Jordy Nelson, who the Raiders poached from the Green Bay Packers? And yes, he's getting older, but everyone's telling me that he's looking great right now in training camp. He's looking fast. He's looking quick. He looks like he has regained whatever step he appeared to have lost last season. He looks dangerous, and we already know his hands are there. We already know his end zone and red zone abilities are there. He is a huge red zone target. I'm expecting at least that. And right now, it sounds like we can expect a lot more from Jordan Nelson this season. But beyond him, you also have Seth Roberts, who's been a decent lower depth chart guy for the Raiders in the past number of years. You have Ryan Switzer, who I like coming out of college and had a decent rookie year. And you also have Cordero Patterson, who is a guy that can return kicks and punts for touchdowns. This is a very good wide receiver core from top to bottom. And combining that with the talent of Derek Carr, should continue to allow the Raiders to win football games this year. Moving on to their next strength, we have to discuss their offensive line, which is is in a little bit of flux right now, but I still think it's gonna be quite good. Now, left tackle right now is Colton Miller, who the Raiders selected with their first round pick in the 2018 NFL Draft. They're waiting on Donald Penn to come back. Right now, he is currently injured, but I still have confidence, even in his rookie year, for Colton Miller to be able to hold down that front, mainly because I love the interior of this offensive line. It is a veteran interior of the offensive line. Kalechi Osemele, left guard, Rodney Hudson, center, and right guard, Gabe Jackson. They have proven to be one of the best interior offensive lines in the NFL. I'm expecting more of the same. Now, the right tackle position right now, Brando Giacomini. I do not love that, but if Donald Payne can come back and go to right tackle or go to left tackle, then pushing Colts Miller to right tackle, then I really like the offensive line moving forward. But even with that interior front, I still think this is a, definitely a strength for this football team, and it's been for the past number of years as Derek Carr was only sacked like 20 times last year. That is insane. We move on to their weaknesses. And we have to start with their linebackers to me. The linebackers in Oakland are still not very good. And this has been a problem position for them for a number of years. Now, they signed Derek Johnson to help remedy this problem. But he's getting older. He's had his injury history. I can't trust Derek Johnson completely. I think he's going to have a good year. But I don't think he's going to be the pro bowler that he's been in the past. The other guys I don't love. Tahir Whitehead. Come on. I don't really trust this guy. And the other guys that have been on this Raiders death trap, they haven't done anything for the past number of years. The linebacker position here in Oakland is still not good enough. They didn't improve it enough in free agency and the draft. Maybe they're waiting until next year to do that. They really should have addressed it more. This has been such a problem position for, Ra for the Raiders for the past couple of years. It's getting ridiculous now. We move on to their cornerbacks. Now, I like Gary and Conley. Out of Ohio State 2017 NFL draft, but he had some off-the-field issues that prevented him from playing most of the year, and he also had some injury issues as well. Okay, but when he was on the field, he looked alright. 
And right now he's looking damn good in training camp and mini camp. So I like that. Uh, Will, is he ready to take the mantle as a number two or number one quarterback for this football team? That's the question. I think I like the answer, but until we see it, you know, it's a question mark for me right now. We also have Rashawn Melvin at this position who had a good year last year, his best year in the NFL yet. He appears to be getting better. I like Rashawn Melvin. Outside of these two, I don't really like the depth here. Dexter, McDougald, uh, other guys listed, TJ Carey, they're okay, but I'm not really buying into the position. It, it caused a lot of problems for them last year. I'm expecting more of the same. I think it's going to be better with Conley and Melvin taking more of the lead here, but still, I don't think it's going to be very good for the Oakland Raiders. Outside of that, there's a lot of positions that to me are neither strengths nor weaknesses. Let's start the quarterback position, Derek Carr. I like Derek Carr. Now, he throws a lot of interceptable balls that a lot of times he gets away with, and other times he doesn't. That's why you always see Derek Carr ranked at best like in the middle of the league in terms of analytical rankings, ESP and QBR, pro football focus rating, DVOA quarterback ratings. He's always going to be at best in the middle of the league, and normally he's closer to 20 than he is to 10, okay? He's a good quarterback, not a great quarterback. He needs to throw less interceptable passes. He takes risks, which you like, right? There are big plays that can cover them. There's also plays that can screw you over. And you saw why his luck turned around and why that really turned things around for the Raiders last year, right? He got so lucky during that 2016 year, and the Raiders team in general did. When the luck reversed the year after, they went from 12 and 4 to 6 and 10. He needs to play a safer game to me. Don't always go all out, Derek Carr. That's my one problem with Derek Carr. We look at the running backs. Marshawn Lynch, Doug Martin, Jalen Rashard, DeAndre Washington. I think Washington is going to be cut, but look at the other guys. I like Rashard as a receiving back. I do not love Marshawn Lynch and Doug Martin. I think Marshawn Lynch is damn near done. I don't think he's going to be playing football in 2020, maybe not even 2019. I'm expecting a very low bar year for him. Probably some end zone and red zone touchdowns, but I don't think he's is going to be very high, and I don't think you're going to be very happy with what Marshawn Lynch gives you this season. He's just nearing that point in his career. And Doug Martin, now, there's an interesting thing about Doug Martin. Every three years, he does something. Okay, he did something, did really well in his 2012 rookie year, then did poorly the next two years, did really well in his 2015 season, next two years did really poorly, and then guess what? It's time again for him to do really well now. It could be too late. Maybe his career is just done. Maybe his talent is washed up. We're going to find find out. Either way, I don't trust these guys. I don't think the positions are very good. Is it a weakness? Eh, no. Because Lynch and Martin, there are, there are worse combinations you could have. It's just not very good. To move on to the defensive side of things again, the defensive line, it's a huge question mark right now. Where is Khalil Mack? If Khalil Mack can come back and keep it play, this can end up being the strength of this football team. Because we already know Mack is a beast. Combine him with Mario Edwards. Combine him with Eddie, Eddie Vanderdose, who had a nice rookie year looking to build upon that. Bruce Irvin is on the DL as well. This could be a really good front in 2018, but you're going to have to have Khalil Mack there. They look at the safeties, Carl Joseph, Marcus Gilchrist, and Reggie Nelson. Eh, it's okay. Not very good, not very bad either. We move on to my statistical projections for the Oakland Raiders. Quarterback Derek Carr. I have him getting 4,100 passing yards, a career high, 27 passing touchdowns, 12 interceptions, and a 92.0 passer rating. I think this John Gruden scheme will be very beneficial for Derek Carr. I'm expecting a good year from him, and I think he's really going to show up this year for the Oakland Raiders, but still having his interception issues and not quite having a pass rating over 100, which you would love for him to have. We move on to running back Marshawn Lynch. Again, I think this is going to be the beginning of the end for Marshawn Lynch. I mean, I think last year was, but I think this year is going to become more and more apparent. I only have him down for 160 carries, 650 yards, and five touchdowns. I mean, again, I'm telling you, I don't think he's going to be playing football in 2020. I just don't see it. I just don't believe it. I think this is definitely where you start to say, okay, Marshawn Lynch, you're done. Probably one more, you know, goodbye, throwaway year, and then you're done. And it could even be this year. And then wide receiver Mari Cooper, 65 catches, 900 yards, and six touchdowns. And look, this doesn't look like the most surprising or really uh, satisfying stat line to some of you, but I still think this will be very good because there's a a lot of mouths to feed. You have Amari Cooper, you have Jordan Nelson, you have Martavis Bryant, Seth Roberts, Ryan Switzer, Jared Cook, and Jalen Rashard, who will all be asking for Derek Carr's attention. And he will pass for over 4,000 yards to me, but at the same time, it's going to be tough for Amari Cooper to break the 1,000 yards that you would probably like, but you will definitely look at this Amari Cooper and say, okay, he was 
definitely better than last year's Mari Cooper. And this may be the most efficient year he'll ever have. I also think that might be the case. Although he may not have as many yards as he had in 2015 or 16, I think his efficiency in terms of if I throw to this guy, how often will he catch it? How reliable is he? How, what, how many drops does he have? I think this might be his most efficient year yet. We move on to my bold predictions for the Oakland Raiders, and let's begin with this. I think Khalil Mack is done with the Oakland Raiders. I think they will trade him before the season or maybe in the beginning of the season. I think Khalil Mack is not going to play, and I don't think he should play, until he gets a contract extension. He deserves it, people. He's an absolute beast. He's an absolute stud, and I can't believe the Oakland Raiders are not re-signing this man. There are only two men that the Oakland Raiders should really give a damn about, and one of them ain't John Gruden to me. I think it is is only Derek Carr and Khalil Mack. Those are your two building blocks. Those are your two men that you want to keep for years and years and years to come. There's plenty of coaches that you could bring in that could do honestly as good a job as John Gruden. It's those two men that, man, good luck replacing them because it took you 20 damn years, it pretty much has been, let's say 15 years, to find two men of this talent level, okay, for the past 15 years. So don't tell me you're going to find them, woo, I'll find a new Khalil Mack tomorrow. You're not going to find a new Khalil Mack tomorrow. It took you 15 years to find a Khalil Mack. You resign this boy. He needs the extension. He's not going to play without it. He knows how viable he is, and I think this situation is really bad, and I don't think he's going to play for the Raiders this season, which really hurts the Raiders as a team overall to me. Bowl prediction number two, the Raiders start three and one. First four games, they host the LA Rams. Again, I don't love that game, but they could definitely win that. And then they go to Denver, they go to Miami, and they host Cleveland. Those last three games are very winnable. I have the Raiders starting three and one, and they could even start four no if they upset the Rams. That game will be in Oakland. I could definitely see it happening, especially being that late Monday night football week one game. I've seen a lot of upsets in that slot over the past 10 years. We move on to my last bold prediction. Gary and Conley will ascend to the number one cornerback role and hold it down. Now, I don't think he's going to be great. I don't think he's going to be a pro bowler, but I think you're going to say, hey, this guy is good. He's our number one corner. He was a good draft pick, and we like this guy moving forward. So with that said, what is my win-loss prediction for the Oakland Raiders? Best case scenario, 11-5. I don't think it's 12-4. I don't think it's 13-3. Even if they bring back Khalil Mack, I just don't love this defense right now. They still have some growing to do. None of the linebackers excite me. The safeties are okay, Carl Joseph being the best one there. But I'm not really excited about anyone defensively except for Gary and Conley and Khalil Mack. The offense, although I think it's going to be very potent in terms of the passing game, I don't think the running game's going to be there with Marshawn Lynch and Doug Martin. These are not 2018 running backs, man. You need to have someone new, exciting at this point. Doug Martin and, and, and Marshawn Lynch, 2012, we were talking about these guys being top 10 running backs. You know, they're dumb. They're, their era has passed, and these are the two men you're trusting. So I do not trust the run game or the defense for the Raiders right now. I don't think you're going to be a 12 or 13 win team in the NFL unless you have one of those components or like a supreme passing game like a 5,000 yard passing game and they're not gonna have that worst case scenario I'll say six and ten I doubt it but perhaps this John Gruden thing just blows up in our face perhaps he really can't coach perhaps he loses the locker room by midseason they quit on him and the losing streak begins I could definitely see that happening I did not see the Raiders being six and ten last year and look what happened it the same thing could happen because the team didn't improve that much they improved not that much. I can see it happening again. And they are pretty healthy last year, relatively. Derek Carr healthy, Amari Cooper healthy, Martin Krebs healthy, and they still struggled. And they went 6-10. So don't tell me it ain't possible. My prediction is 8-8. Eight eight. Okay, and again, that is assuming Khalil Mack is not there. If Khalil Mack is there, I may bump it up to 9-7 and seven and 10-6 and six when September rolls around. But right now, no Khalil Mack. Mm -mm. I can't pick playoff. Mm -mm. I can't do it. Your passes game will be good. And your defense, it won't be god-awful. But it won't be very good, okay? In that combination, it's just going to cause trouble for me. I, I just don't see how you're going to be better than like the Chargers who have had the same formula, okay? And even they've had a better run game than you're going to have this year, right? Philip Rivers will throw well, okay? He'll have a good year for the past 10 years, and they won't make the playoffs more than half of those years. Why? Because their defense wasn't good enough or their run game wasn't good enough, right? If the if uh, Philip Rivers and the Chargers couldn't do it, why are you going to do it? John Gruden, eh, I don't buy it. 
I have the Raiders going 8-8 eight eight this season. So there you go. Those are my thoughts on the Oakland Raiders. What are your thoughts? Comment down below. I want to know. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like, comment, and most importantly, to subscribe. And until next time, it's been MJ of Sports Fan Entertainment. I'll be back tomorrow with the Super Bowl champion, Philadelphia Eagles. I'm out. Peace. Thank you.